nothing like being in the woods. You hear the woods come alive as the sun rises, from birds chirping, squirrels barking. What is a better place to say, hey man, God made this moment, made this place just for me to be in it. In those woods, I'm usually spending my time hunting. I'm out there and I'm able to think in the downtime because I'm able to reflect on the beauty. It just completes the cycle. My name is Travian Mitchell. I live in Durham, North Carolina. I am a eighth grade science teacher, head football coach, head track coach, and a loving husband. The way I came to be in contact with Baha'is is a strange one. I'm on my way hunting, a place that I don't figure too many people knew about. And a gentleman drives up and he hollers out, hey, hey buddy, you kill many deer around here? He goes into a conversation about how he's looking for a place to hunt and whatnot. So he tells me, you know, hey man, we can get together sometime if you like. Let's share a hunt. And a hunting partner is a wonderful thing. So the guy gives me his number, goes by the name of Mitch. Lo and behold, man, it begins to be the start of a beautiful relationship. He says he works with a junior youth program. I asked him a little bit more about these junior youth groups. Again, I'm all about making sure the youth are prepared, man. So I want to say, hey, man, you know, it's funny you're working with youth because that's my passion. That's my thing, making sure that youth are, are good. We got into the conversation about it being a Baha'i principle of service. And I'm like, Baha'i, you know, I've heard of them right down the street in Decatur, literally on the other end of the street that I lived on, it's been a Baha'i center. I was introduced to a gentleman by the name of Saul. One day we were talking about religion and I was explaining, you know, how I'm a bit combative when it comes to Christianity. Well, that led to Saul inviting me to a study circle. I went and it was probably one of the realest experiences I've ever had where it was like no one was there to be like the leader or the pastor or the minister. It was an experience that I had longed for in Christianity. It was comfortable. And though it was a setting in which we were learning some religious texts, it was almost to the point where the conversation was very colloquial in that it was just everyday talk. I mean, about something that was beautiful and spiritual and edifying to God, to our spirit, to our community, and that would help us change the world for the better. I even came to find that I can learn the teachings of Baha'u'llah and still keep Jesus. That was beautiful because in the end, we're talking about unifying people anyway. Nothing different than what Jesus was trying to do. There was nothing ever demeaning against me, one, being a Christian, and two, me and my love for Jesus. I have every intention on continuing on with these study circles. There is something to be had by them. So I can use it as a tool to give to someone else to say, hey, you find yourself in this situation. Well, I got some reflections of the spirit that I want you to check out. And it might just help you in this situation. And it won't go against anything you believe in, but it might just help you in a place that you might find yourself where nothing else has helped you. I only hope that the things that I do, the things that I say, the atmospheres that I create make this world a better place. Through the kids that I teach, I just hope that change someone's life for the better to make not only them a better person but to make their world a better place.